Let's talk about a backfire. Let's talk about, oh my god, the Me Too backfire continues. You know how many videos I've made about Me Too backfiring? Like five? Because we keep having data show that the Me Too movement has actually worsened relations and it's made people less trusting. It's made people more divided. And now we have another report. As of today, from Gallup, U.S. men less concerned than in 2017 about sexual harassment. Listen, I do not like abuse and harassment. I am, I am rather uh, left-leaning on so many of these, these issues. I just don't like authoritarianism. That's fair. And that means when I heard about the vicious monsters that were perpetrating these horrifying acts for years against men and women alike, mostly women, I was outraged. I was angry. And I said, OK, let's have a measured response to solving this problem. Instead, humans, as you know, are emotional. And in their emotional outrage, the Me Too movement erupted. Within the Me Too movement, there have been some instances where people have been falsely accused, wrongly accused, and uh, accused of rather nothing. Aziz Ansari was accused of a bad date, and it actually hurt his career. Chris Hardwick was falsely accused, and he was suspended. Johnny Depp, we now know, apparently was falsely accused, and he lost a role in, uh, it said, it was reported that he lost a role in Pirates of the Caribbean. Johnny Depp was being abused. Now what happens? Today, men care less. Congratulations. Your outrage has backfired again. Well, let's take a look at what Gallup has to say about this. This is a post from uh, Gallup Today by Megan Brennan. 17 months after the Me Too movement exploded, U.S. men are less convinced than they were at the start of the movement that sexual harassment in the workplace is a major problem. They are also more likely to believe that people in the workplace are too sensitive to the problem of sexual harassment. Still, on both measures, men show more concern on the issue today than they did in 1988, which is still good news, I suppose. Americans, men in particular, becoming less sympathetic to workplace sexual harassment. Wow, that is mind blowing. Let's let's mix a little bigger. There we go. We can do one more, I think. In terms of the number of women who face sexual harassment in the workplace, would you say harassment these days is a major problem or a minor problem? And it looks like, let's, let's pull up some data. On 2019, February 12th to 28, 62%. When we jump down to 1998, it was only 45%. And 47 said it was a minor problem. So that's still good news from 1998. But when we jump back to, where's our 2017 numbers? We have, uh, well, we only have 2017 to October. We can see that it's actually dropped a lot. You know, women are very concerned about this and have been for a while, but even in 1998, women didn't really care about it. There's an important thing to point out in whether or not people care about an issue. It's whether or not the media is bashing you over the face with it. If today the media came out and said, you know, I don't know, um, coffee was bad for you and every media company ran that story and you polled people, they'd probably more con- be more concerned today than they were, you know, 10 years ago. So it's re- it really is, is the media highlighting a problem that isn't a problem, or are we just prioritizing based on what we think is the problem? It's a challenge. It really is. Well, let's move on. Do you think that people in the workplace are too sensitive or not sensitive enough to the problem? We can see that light green is too sensitive and dark green is not sensitive enough. And now nine points up, 39% saying too sensitive, although interestingly, not sensitive enough has grown. And this is actually amazing. Too sensitive in the 1998 was really high. Wow, that's that's amazing. I wonder what it would be like if they did this in the 50s. It would be like basically everyone says women should shut up. Majorities of Americans overall still agree that sexual harassment in the workplace is a major problem and that people in the workplace are not sensitive enough to it. But fewer do so now than in October 2017. That's important because I'm pretty sure that's when Me Too launched. Since then, hundreds of high profile men in the U.S. have been accused of sexual misconduct. Currently, 53% of men say sexual harassment in the workplace is a major problem. Okay, so we looked at that. Let me, I want to point something out. Uh, this is a Daily Mail story. They say the Me Too backlash. Men are now less likely to believe workplace sexual harassment is a serious problem than when they did when the movement began in 2017. So let's take a look at the data. In 1998, people were like, yeah, I don't care. But things were getting good. They were getting better. Just around the time Me Too launched, people were like, this is a problem. Let's deal with it. About a year and a half on, where are we now? People are tired of it, saying, nah. But they're still better off than they were in 1998. But I would, I would have to speculate. If we're looking at the ramifications of Me Too, it would seem to have done worse for women. Because something happened between 98 and 2017, where in those 20 years, people were like, you know, things need to change. 
And then something happened in a year and a half after Me Too where people are like, I'm sick of this. So it would seem Me Too all around has actually failed. Now, I will say this. Me Too has done good to get rid of specific individuals. Calling out these individuals has gotten them fired, removed them from the jobs, lawsuits, jail time, etc. But it would seem that for public opinion, it's actually pissed people off. Let's read on. Gallup first measured opinion on these two questions in March 1998 as President Bill Clinton <clears throat> excuse me, was dealing with sexual harassment allegations from several women. At that point, half of Americans, including 55% of women and 45% of men, considered sexual harassment in the workplace to be a major problem. The figures for both men and women were much higher in 2017 in a poll conducted several weeks after a New York Times story detailed a string of sexual harassment allegations against Hollywood producer Harvey Weinstein. But as noted, since then, based on Gallup's February 12 to 28 poll, men's concern has waned while women's has not. That's actually interesting. So we can see, well, that's not true at all. We can see that women's has waned uh, quite a bit, but not as much, only 3%. So I, that's important to point out. And we can see, what is this? Why are there? Uh, so this is national adults. Yeah. So, so between men and women. Overall, it went down. Oh, okay. So, oh, 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 I apologize. I had the numbers mixed up. National adults is on this side. It's gone down for most adults. So it has definitely waned by a substantial degree, degree among men. Wow. Almost back to 1998 levels. Ladies, the protests here have kind of ostracized men where something happened in between where men were getting involved to like 21 points. And now you've pushed them all the way back down to where, I mean, wow, that's actually, that's actually kind of sad if you were to ask me to down 13 points. Well, let's read on. The poll does not shed any light on why men's views about sexual harassment may have changed since October 2017. During that time, a torrent of sexual misconduct allegations have been levied against well-known men and widely covered in media. This preponderance of news coverage may have put men on the defensive, or it may be that they had a strong reaction in the immediate wake of the Weinstein allegations and start of the Me Too movement, but that they have become somewhat desensitized to the issue since then. Or, as they mentioned, Brett Kavanaugh. Brett Kavanaugh's Supreme Court confirmation hearings may have also been a factor. 54% 54% of Republican men, including independents who lean Republican, considered sexual harassment to be a major problem in 2017, but just 35% do now. There is no difference in Democratic men and those who lean Democratic. Or it may be something else entirely, but the decline in concern about sexual harassment has clearly been predominant, uh, predominantly among men, and in particular, Republican men and men younger than 50. I'm going to go ahead and say Brett Kavanaugh. Why? We learned that many of the allegations against him were fake. One guy called an allegation, claimed that a woman was assaulted on his boat. Lie. One woman claimed that he was engaging in ridiculous parties where they would line up outside of rooms to gangbang women. Lie. (laughs) Obvious lie. Like, just absolutely not true. She walked back those claims in an interview later. What do you think that's going to do to people who are paying attention? They're going to say, whoa, whoa, maybe we jumped the gun on this. Maybe it's not true. Let's read on. 55% 55% of men aged 18 to 49 currently consider sexual harassment to be a major problem, a 16-point drop from 2017. The decline on the same measure among men 50 and older is 10 points. The differences among women on the same question are negligible. And so we have uh, this year gender differences in views of sexual harassment as a major problem. And we can see uh, the differences. Yeah, so they, they say it's negligible for women, which is interesting. In the same polls measuring public attitudes about the problem of sexual harassment, Gallup asked Americans whether they have experienced it personally. Women are four times as likely as men to say they have been sexually harassed. Nearly half of all women today, 48%, say they have been sexually harassed up from 42% in 2017. The Me Too movement has been credited with emboldening women to talk about their experiences as victims of sexual assault. And when men tried speaking out, many of them were pushed aside, though Terry Crews was able to get substantial coverage and support for his issues. I know many men who have been sexually harassed in the workplace. I also know they refuse to talk about it. There is a social stigma among men. And so one thing I want to make sure we always point out in issues like this, while we should definitely pay attention to those who are reporting crimes and, you know, amoral behavior and things like this, it's important to point out that the squeaky wheel gets the grease. If women are more likely to complain about it, it may be perceived that they're more likely to be victims. In many instances, this tends to be true. The wage gap, for instance, has been thoroughly debunked over and over again. But because women, uh, typically women, not all women, but because it's, it's typically women who clamor about it, who say, I should be paid more, it is presumed by many people it must be true. But it isn't. And so that's, that's a serious issue. But we know, I mean, it's, it's fairly obvious. It should be obvious to anyone. But for biological reasons, women are more likely to be harassed. Bottom line, 
Less than a year a year and a half after the Me Too movement took America by storm, men in the U.S. have become less likely to say that sexual harassment is a major problem in the workplace and that people in the workplace are not sensitive enough to it. So let's point this out. Saying it's a backlash from Me Too isn't necessarily accurate. They're not drawing that distinction. I will say, however, that is my personal opinion. In my opinion, I think the Me Too movement did some good, but then almost immediately had a massive overreaction. So, you know, I want to make, make sure that's clear. The data doesn't suggest why the decline happened. My opinion, based on my reading of the news, my personal assessment would lean more towards what the Daily Mail thinks of it. I do think it's very important they point out this is an opinion. However, in my opinion, Me Too has backfired. When you see Chris Hardwick, Johnny Depp, Aziz Ansari, and these people falsely accused, Brett Kavanaugh falsely accused, it's going to lead people to claim the Me Too movement is doing harm. And it's going to cause a recoil from a lot of people. But I'll leave it there. Stick around. I got one more video coming up in a few minutes. This next one's going to be fun. Science, conspiracy, international conflict. Stay tuned.